Welcome back. All right, so last night the giggle was on. I did stay up. I did watch it. Uh, man, I did not get very much sleep last night at all. But at any rate, um, the giggle I enjoyed. Now, I'm going to say this. There are people today who are just shaking their fists and by regeneration. That's stupid. How dare they? Regeneration was just introduced to Doctor Who initially because the first Doctor's health wasn't in great shape. Uh, he was forgetting things, William Hartnell, and so they replaced him. The show was popular and they replaced him. And so regeneration became a plot contrivance because of an actor being older, not because they had planned that before time. It was just sort of a, how are we, well, we'll just have him turn into the other one. And so that's the way it's done. Now, last night, what I watched was David Tennant's Doctor who throughout the three episodes, which I cannot wait to watch them again because they're fascinating, and I, I, I really did enjoy quite a bit all three of the specials. But I, I thought that if David Tennant, let's just say that the 14th Doctor had, had passed to become the 15th Doctor, so you have just a regular regeneration, I, I kind of would have felt like... <sighs> I mean, that's, a, that's a, a, a tough way to go about things, if that's the case. I, I think that it would have been probably well-received and all, but still. Um, I don't think there's a way to make all fans happy. I think that the one issue I had with last night's episode, if, if I was going to pick at it, is that it felt like the defeat of the toy maker on some level was kind of easy, kind of, sort of, uh, in the end. Uh, I thought that Neil Patrick Harris did a fantastic job as the toy maker. I would be fine with him somehow, some way, finding his way back. Obviously, we're going to go to the Master again. I'm concerned with that, too. So, to be honest, the rumors that the Master is going to be the villain for the first season here under Shudi Gatwa. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, it, it feels like we've played that out, that it's been done. It's been done over and over and over. Uh, but also, if you paid attention during the episode, the toy maker even mentioned someone who was coming, someone else. So it is possible that maybe we see things a little bit different. Maybe there is some other greater, grander villain that's going to be on its way. And maybe it'll explain the whole timeless child thing, right? So maybe we're going to get some kind of timeless child tie in there which will make the storyline make a little bit more sense and then maybe the master would be working with the doctor we know this has happened before with missy right um that missy was working with the doctor not against the doctor mostly depended on the episode and i really really enjoyed miss uh, uh missy as well although this time out it's rumored that it'll be the maestro instead of the master so uh it, it's going to be a fascinating series which is going to debut uh, in the spring, of course, the Christmas specials between now and then. And apparently it's May is the expectation for when the new episodes come out. Although it could be sooner because they've already filmed, I think, most of season two. Which means that there's actors out there who have over a season worth of information they can't share. That has to be tough on some level. That you're doing all these storylines. You're probably like, man, this is a lot of fun stuff we're doing. I can't tell anybody. So I'm looking forward to it. I think Shooty got one in the scenes that he had in this one. He was good. Um, and I, I thought the storyline made a lot of sense. So the idea that, so you split them off. You have the 14th Doctor, David Tennant, who is tired. He is tired. He has been through it all. He doesn't stop. It's never ending. And it feels like the, the regeneration happened the way that it did because you had to separate the tired, worn down Doctor from a new regenerated version, uh, which is the new Doctor, and one that will be completely different. You know, this this way, it's it's a mild, soft reboot without being a reboot, and it leaves things open so that if they ever decide we're going to do some more specials with with uh, Tennant and Tate, you can. Um, and it's already been said that that Rose. Uh, the the daughter of Donna and the niece of the Doctor will be showing up in Doctor Who episodes and could very well be going into the TARDIS as well. So there's there's going to be some kind of crossover and I would think Tennant's Doctor will come back into it at different points and I'm okay with it. Now, there are people saying, well, it, it kind of destroys the, the whole 
um, lore and it, it kind of makes it so that it, it's not as impactful when a doctor passes. I don't think this is going to happen again. So what we'll have is we'll have a new doctor, we'll have probably three series with a new doctor, and then we'll move on to a different one. That's traditionally the way it works. Each doctor gets three series. I think the by regeneration was just for this occasion, just to take all of the baggage that comes with this doctor that has, as David Tennant's doctor said, lived for a billion years. There's a lot of baggage there. A lot of companions. I thought it was great how the toy maker brought up old companions, brought up what happened to them, and Tennant was, nope, and he was trying to defend himself, and, and that makes everything okay. And it was like, all right, this is awesome. And then when it gets to, he was going to talk about the Timeless Child, and I challenge you to a game, and the toy maker has to answer said challenge. So I, I, I was very entertained by what I saw. Again, I thought Neil Patrick Harris hit it out of the park. And there was some genuinely creepy moments. The doll parts, that was... I mean, we, we know that marionettes can be creepy and that um, ventriloquist dolls and, and that type can be creepy to look at. Um, but yeah, there's some nightmare fuel in that, in that as well. Uh, so if you have small kids, I could see where that would be a little bit intense for them. And, and I say that only because Doctor Who's always been referred to as kind of a kid show. And, you know, it, it initially was seen as a show that could teach you some science, a little bit of this and that, a little bit of history and whatever. And I, I think they still try to do that somewhat. I was glad to see Kate Lethbridge-Stewart back. Um, I thought the idea of the world going mad because of this message in the TV was interesting as well. Um, I, I thought they went a little bit too meta at times, but again, it's Doctor Who, so that's going to happen. Uh, but it, it really it really opens things up. So with the new Doctor now, and again with this by regeneration that's taken place, it really means that now Russell T. Davis can do whatever he wants with this series and it can work. And I think this solves a lot of the potential issues coming out of the Chibnall era. And I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to see the new Christmas special. I think Doctor Who should always have a Christmas special. And so I'm glad to see those back. I think that's going to be fun. Uh, looking forward to the new series again this coming spring. But let me know your thoughts. Like, obviously with, with Wolf, they didn't have him in this episode. He was only able to film the one, one uh, scene that was shown in last week's episode. I'm glad they didn't try to CGI something in and take some audio from stuff he had said before to put in there to have him there. Um, he's, of course, mentioned at the end, and apparently they had the idea of him maybe passing on at the end of the episode and decided not to do that, which is good because it just would have been um, a really sad uh, ending to the episode if they had gone in that direction. I do find the idea of the Doctor settling down and living a life on Earth as... That, that makes sense. Makes absolute sense that he would do so because he clearly has a tremendous amount of affection for the planet that we currently reside on. And so where else would he retire? Gallifrey is not an option. So he would retire on Earth. I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes from here. And again, the door's still open for Tennant to come back at some point, for Tate to come back at some point. I thought all three of these adventures were fun. I do kind of wish the toy maker had been a little more difficult to overcome than what he was, but again, Neil Patrick Harris, fantastic job, and overall, it was very well written and entertaining. So, and I thought the the Mel uh, Melanie being there as sort of a cameo that was kind of nice as well, and sort of just it it was nice to see them kind of tying everything up and talking about various eras, uh, both classic and new Who, and it was fun. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Did you enjoy the show? Did you not? Why or why not? Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you have not done so already. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. While well, my cat, she's decided it's playtime and she's just, she's she's having a ball to her for herself. Anyways, uh, so thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.